Amen. No, I mean, it's really good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You guys, there's things to be excited about. There's things to find joy about. And when you're walking with Jesus, that's the only thing you need. And that should bring such healing, such great joy, such power. Listen, you get power in your life because Scripture says that you have the authority to trample enemies. What's your enemy today? Call it out. Rebuke it and tell it to leave in the name of Jesus. When Jesus healed people, he laid hands on them and said, sin no more. Go to God with a repentant heart. Go to God with an attitude of praise. Go to God with an attitude of worship. Go to God with an attitude that I'm going to build. Go to God with an attitude that I'm going to dream. And listen, when you get to the dream, ask God what direction to head. Because it's your focus. Listen, I, I, I need, many of you guys are, are, are fasting today. We're not shooting a, a tweet and a horn because we don't want that to be our reward. But listen, I need to say this to you guys that are doing that. Don't focus on what you're not getting. Focus on what you are getting. Don't focus on that pizza pizza that's sitting across the table that someone else is eating. Focus on that green salad that says, I can eat that because God gave it to me. Thank you, Jesus, and I'm going to feed upon your spirit because I got food that you don't even know that I have. Amen? All right, I guess I was just supposed to do announcements. I can't help myself. When the Holy Spirit just bowls up inside of you, you got to spew it out. I love Jesus. So if you have any prayer requests or needs, those are in the back of the chair. You can fill those out. Let us know you're here. Let us know that, that you have prayer requests. Um, tithes and offerings are back there in that box back there. Allow God to lead you when you're giving. You guys, the church gave its facility to the homeless. And we're building upon that gift. And so just thank God for those moments. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes God calls us to do things that aren't easy. But it's the love that we share of Christ that truly counts. January 26th at 630 is a ladies' bunko night. I guess I'm not invited, so I won't be there. Uh... Water baptism is January 28th, so I think that's next Sunday, if my calendar's right. So if you have never been baptized and you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior or you want to accept Him, accept him as your Savior, uh, then get a hold of one of the pastors and we'll get you on the list. And we would love to have that joy with you and that experience with you. Uh, remember Jamie Montera's coming, the evangelist, February 11th through the 13th. It's going to be powerful, and people are going to be healed, I promise you. And then there's a, a women's conference called uh, Hearts of Flame, February 23rd and 24th at the Dream Center. And then also, is it this Saturday, Brian, or this, or this Monday? This Monday, a Youth Corps is going to start back up. So, you guys, Brian has a very good ministry, him and mis ministry with Youth Corps. And so I would send your kids with him. And he'll, he'll minister to their lives. He's got such a calling on his life for the youth. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for us. I thank you for a closer relationship with you. I thank you for marriage, God, that you protect each man and woman here in their marriage, Father God. And that you touch their hearts and build upon that, Lord, that, that you're that stranded cord that can't easily be broken. And so, Father, we, we thank you for that, and we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, and I invite you, Holy Spirit, to be here as we worship and we praise you. Let us honor your name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
morning, Heartland. Would you stand with us? And let's take these next couple of moments to turn around and greet those around you. Thank you, Lord. We just lift up your name this morning. Thank you for saving us, for rescuing us from our sin. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you. God of Jacob, great I am. Throw louder than the thunder, 
make your glory known. Hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar. Hail, Let the lion roar, 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 roar. Bright of Zion, prophet spoke, our Messiah, flesh and bone. Open up the scroll Like a lamb you suffered But the lion has a rose Hail, lion of Judah Let the lion roar Hail, lion of Judah Let the lion roar Hail, lion of Judah Let the lion roar Hail, Lion of Judah, let the lion roar, 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 roar. Prepare the way, prepare the way, the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, prepare the way. Prepare the way of the Lord, O oh valley. Be raised up, O oh mountain. Be made low, O oh valley. Be raised up, O oh mountain. Be made low, O oh valley. Be raised up, O oh mountain. Be made low, O oh valley. Be raised up on mountain, be made low, low, low. Let the lion roar, roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, hail, hail, lion of Judah. Let the lion roar, oh valley, be raised up, oh mountain, be made low, oh valley. Up on mountain, be made low, a valley, be raised up on mountain, be made low, a valley, be raised up on mountain, be made low.
Jesus. 
something about that name, but there's something about that name. Yes, Jesus, there is just something about your name, Jesus. We praise you, Lord, this morning. So we're going to go into a time of communion, and if you're here today and you didn't take a communion cup and you'd like one, raise your hand, then the guys will bring it to you. If you're a visitor, you're more than welcome to take communion. If you know Jesus Christ as your Savior, God's table's for everyone, not the religious law of the church. So raise your hand and allow God to work in your heart and take part 
and this great table. something about a signature. There's a Lamb's Book of Life. And when you come to know Christ, your signature, God takes your name with his finger and Jesus' blood and writes it in that book. There's a signature by Jesus with your name on it. I want, I want you to ask yourself today, is your name written in that book? When it's written in God's blood, in Jesus' blood, it can't be erased. Ask God about that signature. There's a signature that's coming that will change everything. And I don't know what that signature is, but there's a sheet of paper that will be moved. And maybe this is for somebody. Maybe somebody's waiting on a signature. I, I want you to ask yourself, is that you? Are, you? are you looking for a signature on a sheet of paper? That may not make sense to most of you, but somebody's waiting on a signature. And I believe spiritually there's a signature coming. So, Father... To that end, Lord, when you have us prophesy, you move forward, God, in each person's life. And the most important signature is that one that's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we don't have to ask for it twice. We get to ask you into our heart, Jesus, and into our life. We get to ask you to forgive our sins. And, and you come in instantly and write our name. And I'm thankful for that signature. Amen. Listen, today, I want to go to, as we have communion, I want to read John chapter 15, 5 through 7. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. Without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. God's table of communion, the Last Supper, is a symbol of us, the branch, being attached to the vine. When you take the cup, it's a symbol of the fruit of the vine. When you stay attached, there's, there's forgiveness of heart. There's joy. There's peace. There's salvation. But when, when you're apart from the vine, when the branch dies, it's thrown into the fire. It withers away, and it can, becomes nothing. I ask you today, are you a part of the vine? If you're taking communion with the right heart and the right mindset, you are a part of the vine. You get to be with the Lord. I want to read something out of the Amplified Version of Psalms 86, verse 5. This, this is one of the first verses I turned to this morning. For you, O Lord, are good and ready to forgive our sins, sending them away completely, letting them go forever and abundant in loving kindness and in overflowing in mercy to all those who call upon you. I encourage you guys today to call upon the Lord. I encourage you guys to ask God to come in and forgive your sins. God's a God of abundant kindness and love and overflowing in mercy. Amen. Do you need more mercy? Do you need more loving kindness in your life towards others? Then ask for it. Because that's who God is. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, starting with verse 23. For I have received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man or a woman examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. When you come to the communion table this morning, we're already there. You've got an invitation. Listen, we all love to get an invitation in a mail to go to, to a friendship party or to a birthday party or a Christmas party. We all love to get invitations to go to something fun. Well, this is a different kind of invitation where it's the best party or celebration that you could ever go to or be a part of. You get to go and you get to set and feel the presence of Jesus Christ on your heart and on your life. You get to lay everything at the table. You get to say, Lord, I brought you my pride. I brought you my lust. I brought you my lack of humility. Those are the gifts that I'm bringing you, God, and those aren't gifts. But that's what you're bringing when you come to this invitation. You don't ha have a bag full of goodies in it. You, gotta, you just carry your garbage bag with you to the table, and, and you leave it there. And then you partake in his body and his blood and remember what he did for us, and you leave the garbage there, and you get to walk out free. And you know who carries out the garbage? Jesus. And you don't get to help him. You know how, how sometimes we help Jessica take out the trash around here? No, Jesus says, I got this. Just give it to me. I never run out of a place to put it. I never run out of arms to carry it. It's not too much. You get to come and lay that at his feet today. And when you leave the party, you will have more joy, more health, more healing, more excitement, more passion, and feel more love than you ever had in your life. That's a party I want to be at. Thank you for God's grace. So, Father, on the night your son was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it and he gave thanks. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which has been given to you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, which is a symbol of our Jesus' shed blood for us, for the remission of sins. There's life in the cup, and there's life in the blood. Just do a self-evaluation. Say, Lord... If there's hidden things in my heart, bring that to the forefront right now so I can ask you to take care of that, to take out the garbage, to forgive me. And, and, and create in me, David said, a new heart. And send your Holy Spirit. Do not take it from me. And then as I leave, God, let me enter into the joy of your salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Take drink. Amen. I want to pray. Our sister is going to come up and preach to us today. And I know, Carrie and I both felt last week that she just has some message bottled up inside of her that was about ready to explode. And so, just allow your hearts to receive what Pastor Marcel is going to bring. So, Heavenly Father, I, I just pray over my sister today. And she's powerful. And she loves you. And I pray you send your Holy Spirit to guide her, to let her lean into you, and that your word would penetrate our hearts. And let her be free. Let there be nothing on her or hindering her. In Jesus' name, amen.
like I am now. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? It's a beautiful morning. Aren't you glad for Jesus in your life? Aren't you glad for Jesus in your life? Aren't you glad that you don't need to make life by your own? Aren't you glad that he carries your burdens? Aren't you glad that he forgives you, that he paid the price? Aren't you glad that your past is covered by the blood of Jesus and now your future is in his hands? In your presence is joy. Aren't you glad that one day he called your name and he turned your life around? Aren't you glad that he changed completely the direction in your life? When I tell you that he called your name, it means he knows how to use that language that we go straight to your heart. Do you know what amazing about Jesus? He comes to our level. He talks to you. I don't know your name. Maybe you are here for the very first time, and I need to be honest with you. Maybe it's the 10th time, and I'm still not right there with your name. But the point is, he knows. He calls your name, and he turns your life around. The very first sign, the most important sign that you are walking and following Jesus is that you do not even realize who you were. A year ago. Transformation is the word. If you are not being transformed day after day, you are not following Jesus. Amazes Marcella when Marcella thinks about who Marcella was last year, I said, Lord, thank you for what you were doing in my life. Thank you for transforming Marcella. Thank you for making Marcella different. Thank you for transforming Marcella in the likeness of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for killing the old man and bringing back to life. Bringing to life the new man. God wants to transform your life. Jesus is making a way for you. And he's not expecting that you were going to make it by yourself. He sends his word. He sends his Holy Spirit. And he holds your hands. Amen. Let's pray. Dear and gracious Father, we praise your name. We lift your name high today, Lord, and we know it's your will to make your voice heard. And Lord, in listening your voice, let us understand what you are saying. And Lord, in understanding what you are saying, let us obey what you are saying. Because Lord, you said, let us be doers of the world and the word and not only listeners. Let us practice what we are learning. So Lord, what I pray this morning is give us your spirit. Give us your Holy Spirit and let us understand the scriptures. Let us understand what you were saying. Let us understand your language, Lord, because we know it's your will to speak with every and each heart here today. Lord Jesus, let us walk in obedience. Let us have this conviction about sin, Lord. And let us follow you, Lord, knowing that the cross is in front of us and the world has to be behind us. Lord, allow my words and my thoughts be acceptable before you. Lord, you know that by myself, I'm nothing. I have nothing to give. I have nothing to share. But I bring before you what I have and I ask you, multiply this to feed this congregation. Lord, they are your children. I'm here only as your vessel. So just use my life. And bring forth the word. This is what I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you glad that you can read that 
that you, you live in a country that you can freely open scriptures and pray together and read the word of God and prophesy your faith and you can come to church with your family. It's not amazing. It's good. Praise God. So it's a reason for joy. It's a reason for rejoicing. We can open scriptures, the word of God, the living word of God, and read this together. Today, um, the title of the sermon would be Eternal Kingdom. Because do you know Jesus? He was trying all the time. All the time Jesus was trying to set the disciples' mind on eternity. All the time he was preparing them for eternity. The disciples, was, they were expecting that Jesus would be their earthly king. They were expecting that Jesus would rise up as their earthly king. That Jesus would dethrone Rome and Jesus would arise on the throne. And Jesus was trying all the time, hey, listen to me. My kingdom, it's not from this world. My kingdom is an eternal kingdom. So my, I am here to give you my peace. I'm here to tell you that doesn't matter the circumstances you are going through now. I'm giving you my peace that surpasses understanding. So now when we walk with Jesus, we have peace, not because of the circumstances, but we have peace because we are learning with Jesus to set our hearts on the things above to set our hearts on the things above so Jesus was training the disciples hey it's not about paying taxes or not it's not about rising up as a worldly king it's about setting your heart on the things above I'm training you my disciples I'm training you my church to walk in this world with your hearts on the things above because I have an unshakable kingdom. Amen. Do you understand that? And when we read scriptures, I'm going to read with you Mark chapter 10 verses. I'm just, if you want to open your Bible with me, Mark chapter 10 verse 33 to 37. We're going to see that at some, po some point, Jesus was preparing the disciples for his departure. He was trying to explain to them that he would die. And then he, he, they, they, they could not understand that. But how, how come, Jesus? Are you leaving? Are you not here to solve our problems? Are you not here to, to, to solve all our, our problems? Are you not our helper? So how come are you dying, Jesus? You didn't rise up as a king yet. How come you cannot leave us now? It's not done yet. How are you leaving now? So Jesus was preparing them for that. Jesus was trying to explain to them that he was about to break the chains of sin upon their lives. He was about to transform he, <clears throat> the world forever. So then he was saying, John chapter 10, verse 33, Jesus was saying, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles. And they will mock him and scourge him and spit on him and kill him. And the third day he will rise again. Verse 35. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to Jesus saying, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Oh, it's, it doesn't sound right. Jesus, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. Jesus, we want you to do what I want. Okay, Jesus? Jesus, let me ask you something. Can you do in my life what I want? Hey, Jesus, can you accomplish in my life my selfish desires? Hey, Jesus, I'm going to ask you something, but can you do that on my way? It doesn't sound right, isn't it? It's kind of weird. But do you know why? Because they were not understanding. They were not quite getting what Jesus was about to do. Verse 36, And he said to them, then Jesus said to them, What do you want me to do for you? Let's see what you want to ask. They said to him, grant us that we may sit one on your right hand 
and the other on your left in your glory. Some version says, in your kingdom. So Jesus, when you rise up in your kingdom, and again, their mentality, we're on the earthly kingdom. So Jesus, finally here in Jerusalem, when you rise up as a king, let us be by your side. Let us be in this position of honor. Let us be before men in positions of honor. And do you know what is amazing? That all the time that Jesus tried to explain to the disciples that he was about to die, he had to rebuke the disciples. First was Peter. He told Peter, you are being used by Satan. You are trying to hinder my, my death. I need to die. I came to die. And then he, he, he rebuked Peter. And then after that was the other disciples when they were just wondering who is going to be the greatest in your kingdom, Jesus. I will be the greatest. I will be the greatest. And Jesus said, no, it's not about that. And now finally the sons of Zebedee that Jesus came to talk, to explain to them, hey, I'm, I'm accomplishing something greater here. My kingdom, it's not from this world. I'm going back to the Father, and I will be there, and I will accomplish something. And then comes the sons of Zebedee telling him, let us sit by your side. Let us have this position of honor. And then Jesus rebukes them again. Let's jump to verse 40, 42. Then Jesus said to them, but Jesus called them to himself and said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers over the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. Yet it shall not be so among you, but whoever desires to become great among you shall be your servant. And whoever of you desires to be first shall be slaves of all. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for me. You see that Jesus now is, hey, you are searching for big positions. You are searching for earthly desires, but I want you to connect your heart on the things above. I'm about to do something great, but I want you to understand my kingdom. And I decide to call this sermon today our eternal kingdom because the same way God wants to give us the Holy Spirit to understand eternity. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus right here, if you are not walking through the earth with your heart on eternity, you have nothing to do on eternity. You have nothing to do on, in heaven if you are not with your heart on heaven right here, right now. And we cannot understand the power of eternity and the power of cross without having the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus finally realized that they wouldn't receive that without the Holy Spirit. And then Jesus starts bringing the Holy Spirit. When we go to John, look, when we go to the next verse, John chapter 16, verse 5. Let's, let's read this, church. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you ask me, where are you going? Because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Again, let's stop here just for a moment. Every time when Jesus was trying to explain to them that he would die, sorrow would come upon their hearts. Because again, they said, what are we going to do here without Jesus? Jesus, but what are we going to do here without you? You cannot leave us now. You cannot die now, Jesus. What are we going to do here without you? So every time when Jesus was trying to explain to them the fullness of the cross, the fullness of what was about to happen, sorrow would come upon their hearts. Let's jump to the next verse. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage. It's, it is for your benefit that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he come, who is that that Jesus is talking about? 
the Holy Spirit. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now without the Holy Spirit. However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth, for He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for He will take off what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take off mine and declare it to you. Praise God. Without the Holy Spirit, we do not grasp the power of the cross in our own lives. Without the Holy Spirit, we don't grasp the position of authority that Jesus exercised over the world right here and right now. When Jesus invites us to walk with him, he invites us to walk with him in heavenly realms. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, I have conquered, I have blessed you with all the spiritual blessings that you need. Now come and walk with me in this fullness, this, the fullness of this revelation. But I need to tell you, we don't have the fullness of this revelation unless we have the Holy Spirit. And then amazing thing that in these scriptures, he breaks it in three parts. How the Holy Spirit will operate. How the Holy Spirit will open our eyes to see. And he mentions that first of all, the Holy Spirit will convince the world about sin. And he's telling one specific thing. Sin. He's not talking about sins. He's not talking about plural. He's telling the, the Holy Spirit will convince the world about one sin. Which is sin is it? Unbelief. Because they don't believe that Jesus is enough. They don't believe that the, word, the, the, the work that Jesus made in the cross, it's done. It's a finished work. Most of people, they, they, they come to church. Listen to me, church. They come to church. They know about Jesus. They heard about Jesus. They know stories about Jesus. But they still don't take the fullness of Jesus' power upon their lives. What the cross means to you today in your personal life, when you close your eyes and you face and you bring to your mind your greatest struggles, is it addiction? Is it a threat of divorce? Is it a lost one? What is your greatest struggle today? What are you praying so hard to God for God to intervene? The question is, how do you see the power of the cross operating towards that struggle? Because this is what Jesus is. Jesus died in that cross. And now through the power of the Holy Spirit, I have the revelation how the power of the cross operates inside of my heart inside of my house against that addiction, against divorce, against division. This is the power of the cross. Are you with me, church? Amen. When I bring that power upon my life, when I walk in that power, and that's why he said, I need the Holy Spirit to convince the world about the sin of unbelief because they don't believe in me. Let's keep reading and then... John, let's go, let's go back to John chapter 16. And then he said on verse, just a moment, let me open my Bible here with you. And then he said verse 9, verse 8, let's read again. And when he comes, John chapter 15, John chapter 16, verse 8. And when he comes, when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they do not believe in me. He will convince the world that they need to believe in Jesus' finished work in the cross. What does it mean, Marcella? Jesus' finished work. It means it's done. The price is paid. 
you now have victory because of Jesus. You now cannot fail and your end is victory because of Jesus. So this is the scene, the, the scene, because the Holy Spirit, it's not a nag. Sometimes we think, oh my gosh, all this condemnation that I'm feeling, all this accusation that I'm feeling, it's coming from the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit convinces me about my sin. No, this is not what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit convinces you of righteousness, that Jesus Christ covers you. But the Holy Spirit will tell you that what Jesus did in that cross, it's enough. It's enough. Paid it all. And then the unbelief of not believing that Jesus Christ paid it all. And the next one, he says, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and you will see me no more. The Holy Spirit convinced about righteousness. Let me tell you something about righteousness. I'm going to dwell in this a little bit, because Jesus is just, and he is righteous. And Jesus is your justice, and he is your righteousness. He is your justice when you messed up with everything. Let's say you did everything wrong. You failed. You sinned. You did what you shouldn't do. He is your justice. And he is your righteousness because he covers you with the perfection of what he did in that cross. You don't need to walk in condemnation and accusation anymore. Any kind of accusation and condemnation, it's never coming from Jesus Christ. Do you know what the Holy Spirit convinces you? Yes, if I failed, the blood of Jesus is enough to cover my sins and to give me a, new brand, a brand new chance today. Righteousness, it's not right doing. It's right standing. Righteousness, it's not doing everything perfectly. It's standing in one which is perfect, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Pastor Troy was very well mentioning the seat, the table that has your name. The table that has a seat with your name. The table of Jesus Christ that receives you. He receives you. Now it's your choice to remain in that seat. To remain in Jesus Christ. This is righteousness. So righteousness, it's not okay. I'm doing everything perfectly. I'm walking perfectly. And now I'm forgiven. No, the blood of Jesus covers a multitude of sins. He washes over you. Amen. And now you remain in Jesus Christ. You do not allow the enemy to steal you from that position. In Jesus' name. And then I want to go to the next that says, And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin, of righteousness and judgment. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. When I don't accept Jesus Christ, I'm rejecting Jesus Christ. And when I'm rejecting Jesus Christ, I will be judged. There is a reckoning coming. The reckoning is coming. And the Holy Spirit convinces us that the last day will come. And on that day, I will be in judgment. I will be there in judgment. And if I don't have Jesus Christ to stand by my side, declaring that he paid the price for my guilty, I will be condemned. Because we are sinners, everybody, we are sinners. We desperately need the blood of Jesus to cover us. We desperately need Jesus Christ as our advocate, as our lawyer is standing by our side that in that day of reckoning. Unless he stands right there in the courtroom be beside you and tell, no, I paid the price. And they received my sacrifice. Do you receive the sacrifice of Jesus over you? Do you receive the blood of Jesus to cover your sins? You just need to call him into your heart and say, Jesus Christ, I accept you. I accept that I believe that what you did in the cross, it's enough. I believe that you paid the price once and for all. And do you know what's going to happen? On the last day, that day, the reckoning day, he will stand by your side. And when the accuser will try to accuse you, he'll say, he's not guilty because I paid the price. So do you understand what I say that righteousness, it's not right doing, but right standing in Jesus Christ? Because we are sinners. 
We need mercy and we need Jesus' righteousness covering us. We stand in Jesus Christ. And because we stand in Him, we have salvation. Amen. So on that day, <coughs> on that last day now, I can finally get into heaven's gates. I can cross those gates because Jesus Christ made a way for me. Amen. And I stand in his name. And here on the earth, I keep living day after day. But the question is, the same way that Jesus Christ was explaining to them the fullness of his plan, of his plan, and he, they couldn't quite get it without the Holy Spirit, is the same with you and me today. If we don't receive the power of the Holy Spirit, if we don't open our hearts and we say, Lord, I need you to give me the Holy Spirit. I need you to baptize me. Now, Lord, I'm baptized in the waters. I'm walking with Jesus. I'm coming to church. Lord, I'm reading scriptures. But Lord, baptize me with your power. Baptize me with your spirit, Lord, so that I will get to know the scriptures. I will understand your kingdom. I will have my eyes open for your power, Lord, for the finished work of the cross. Amen. The Holy Spirit, he will reveal you all the things. Jesus was saying in, 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 in John, Jesus was saying, I have more things to tell you, but the Holy Spirit needs to come first. I have more things to reveal to you, but you cannot bear it now without the Holy Spirit. And the good news is, now it's available for us. Now we have it. Now we can have the mind of Christ with His perception of things because of the Holy Spirit. And He is available right here, right now for you. You just need to invite and say, Lord, send me the Holy Spirit. Give me the Holy Spirit, Lord, so I get to know and I get to walk through life, not with my heart on the things down here, but with my heart on the things above. How many people you know that just left the church because Jesus didn't do what they were expecting? How many people do you know that they stayed in church, but they had their checklist, their checklist of prayers, and because it didn't happen the way they were expecting, they just left. Like the sons of Zebedee, Jesus, we want to ask you to do something that we want you to do. And Jesus said, hey, come on. My kingdom is different. What you are asking, it doesn't match with what, we, with, with what I have for you. So can you just receive the spirit of truth that will give you the revelation, that will open your heart, that will guide you in this different mindset? I started this service telling you, aren't you glad that one day Jesus called you by name and he completely changed the turn of your life? He completely changed the direction of your life. If Jesus came into your life and you were exactly the same, Maybe he didn't come yet into your life. Maybe you were just listening about him. Maybe you were just attending the church. But he didn't fully took the throne of your heart. Maybe you are still in the throne of your heart. Maybe you are still the Lord over your heart. Maybe you are still the Lord of your decisions. Because when Jesus comes, he changed the direction of everything. For one simple reason, now you walk with your mind on the things above. Now you walk with your heart on the things above, on eternal things. Now you are, you are walking here, but you belong to his kingdom. You are walking here, but you follow his kingdom. Amen. So I just encourage you today, like the disciples, just set your mind on the things above. Say, Lord, I'm striving so much. I've been even harming myself, even harming those around me, Lord, because I'm striving so much for the things here. But Lord, help me to set my mind on the things above. Help me, Lord, to walk through this life. But with, Jesus said, you gather treasures up there. Set your heart on the things up there. 
get prepared because here we're going to live. Those who live a long life, they live 190 years, 80 years. But we are talking about eternity. We are talking about everlasting life. Never ending life. But the, but the point is here, it's my training. God, Jesus is walking with us here and teaching us about eternity right here, right now. He's talking about intimacy with Jesus right here, right now. Because if you don't have in intimacy with Jesus right here, right now, you have nothing to do right now. Go away because I don't know you. But Jesus, in your name, I preached. In your name, I cast out demons. But Jesus, in your name, I did great things. Go away. I don't know you. We are learning intimacy right here, right now. The disciples struggled to realize what Jesus was trying to tell them. But then when the Holy Spirit came, they got their eyes open. And the church of Jesus started growing and growing. We are the church of Jesus on the earth right here, right now. For such a time like this. And we are called to walk with our hearts on the things above. We are called to walk with our hearts on eternity. We are called to walk having peace and joy and love because we are not moved by the circumstances, but we are moved by the Spirit. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. If you are here today, and if you are here today and you just realize that you are missing the point, Maybe the Holy Spirit, like I said, the Holy Spirit speaks into your heart. It's not Pastor Marcella. He's just giving my words a different meaning specific for your heart. This is what he does. Because do you know what's amazing? You are receiving this word in a way. Somebody here is receiving in a different way. Somebody here is receiving in a different way. Somebody there is receiving. Do you know what the Holy Spirit is doing? He's giving power to the truth. He's, he's translating that word inside of your heart. And if you're here today and you said, Lord, I was missing the point. Maybe I was like those disciples. I wasn't quite understanding. I was asking Jesus to do my way, my time, my will. And Lord, you are doing something so much great. So if you are here today and you notice that you are missing the point, that you couldn't quite understand. The good news is, <laughs> He's here for you today. Just re repent and surrender. Say, Jesus, I surrender. I surrender, Lord, and I want you to give me this new mentality. Change my mind, Lord. Set my mind, set my heart on the things above, Lord. Send me your spirit, Lord, and guide me. Lord, teach me to walk in peace, not because of the circumstances, but because my heart is set on the things above. Lord, help me to have peace right here, right now, not in the overcome. How many times you said, I will be glad when this is over. No, you can be glad right here, right now, today, because of your Lord and Savior. You, you, don't, need to, you don't need to say, I will be glad when this is over. I will be glad when I'm finally... No, it's right here, right now, because you are setting your heart and your mind on the things above. And you will not fail because the one who lives inside of you cannot fail. And it, this is exactly what he was trying to say, what I'm doing. It's once and for all. It's once and for all. And I am defeating your accuser, your adversary. And I'm defeating him. I'm putting him. I'm giving you authority to tread, to step on his head. I'm giving you that. You have that right here, right now. You just need to walk in that authority. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When finally the disciples realized what they had, what they received, they walked in power. Let's pray. Worship team can come forward, please. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's changing your mind today. He's changing your heart today. He's teaching you to walk with your heart set on the things above.
He is teaching you that you are a citizen of an eternal kingdom. You are not American, you are not Brazilian, you are not from country A or B or C. You are a citizen of heaven. You belong to an eternal kingdom. You belong to Jesus Christ, the one that paid the price for you. And he's calling you to walk in the fullness of the authority of what he paid for you in that cross. Today, today is the day that the Lord has made. And let's rejoice in it. Let's rejoice in it. Don't wait the overcome. You don't have peace in the overcome. You have peace right here, right now. And do you know what's amazing? I was reading a devotional yesterday, and I want to read part of it for you that says, right now, you need him to show you that even if you have just failed, you are still the righteousness of God in Christ. This is why the Holy Spirit is called the Comforter. Because He comforts you with the assurance of His righteousness covering your sins. Comfort you and to point you back to the cross of Jesus every time you fail. The only thing that He will convict you is of your righteousness in Jesus Christ. The prince of this world, which means Satan, which means accuser, he is judged. That's why Jesus Christ said, the Holy Spirit will come and will convince the world about judgment. Because the prince of this world is judged. He's judged. He's condemned. He has no power over your life when you remain in Jesus Christ. Remain in Jesus Christ today. Don't give up your seat. Don't give up your seat. Remain in Jesus Christ. Righteousness, it's right standing in the perfect one. I encourage you to pray the most sincere prayer you ever prayed in your life. You say, Lord, help me to set my mind on the things above. Lord, help me to walk in this earth, but not loving more the world than I love you. Not walking only with earthly mind, but help me to understand your kingdom. In Jesus' name.
And the Holy Spirit was here today, amen. I, I, I just, we give God the glory, but I want to just say thank you to the worship team for being faithful. Josh, I know that starts with you leading. But all of you guys have been faithful about listening to what songs the Holy Spirit wants you to sing. That was powerful today. That set the tone to praise God. Because see, you start praising God first, you start worshiping, and then he gives words. And then you get to hear a sermon about set your mind on the things above and not on the things below. Oh, if you weren't changed today, you weren't listening. I'm just calling ace and ace and a spade a spade. And I'm not that good at cards. That's, it changed your life today if you're listening. You don't have to walk in condemnation, so don't. You, you are called to, to walk in upstanding, like Marcella was saying, and righteousness, walk in the right standing with God. So just, when you fail, go to the Lord, cry out, and then get back up on the platform and start walking again, and take off. So Heavenly Father, to that end, I just pray blessings over your people. I, I just pray that the Holy Spirit would shine upon them, that your glory would touch them, that, that your power would fall on their face. And on their hearts. And God, move this week in the lives. Because you keep telling me, Troy, no matter what, go make disciples. Go make disciples. Go make disciples. I'll take care of the rest of the stuff. You just go make them because that's what I called you to do. And that's for this church to go and make disciples. And so, Father, to that end, bless your people now. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.